guys and welcome back to my channel and our entryway. Um, so if you've been following me a little bit, uh, you've been watching as we design this entryway and taking it step by step and putting it together. And I thought a really fun video would be talking through how I kind of do that, what my process kind of looks like and you know just the at least the beginning steps of it um, because as you know we're, we're doing this for our own home this is not um, a client's space and so you know I get to take my time and be a little bit more patient and change our minds and play a little bit more which I feel like is the fun part so we are gonna just kind of start at the very beginning talk about exactly what it is that I start thinking about um, what it is that I start putting together and then a little bit towards the end of this video we're also going to do a little DIY for a fun pin board so that you know if you're like me then you like to have things that you touch when I write notes when I all that's it's all on paper usually I don't generally keep everything digital even though that may be where it kind of starts so let's just jump right into the very first piece um, and part of what I do when I'm designing a space. It can be extremely enticing to when you're, you know, at places like Home Goods, Target, wherever you like to shop, or even the thrift store, which is one of my favorite places, to just start purchasing items, just start accumulating and trying to put them up and um, slapping paint onto the wall, things like that. And then at the end, you're like, that didn't work out <laughs> or that wasn't what I envisioned or what I was trying to do. And so I feel like what's super important is even though that urge is there to really jump in and get started is to slow down a little bit. And where I like to start with that and the very first step is really thinking through the function and the need for the space. It's an entryway, right? What does an entryway need? Maybe places to put your stuff when you come in to the door. Maybe it's, you know, you don't really need anything in it. You know, maybe you have other areas in your home that function for that. So I like to start by making a list of those things. So for us, we're a family of five. We have three children. And maybe for some people, um, you know, they need drop zones, things like that. So places to put shoes, keys, backpacks, purses, coats, whatever. Um, a lot of times that's what an entryway is, is used for. For us, personally, my children all kind of have their own spaces that they put those items within their room. My husband as well, uh, he has a specific area in our bedroom where he places his wallet and his keys and things like that. So he also does not need a, a drop zone area. Although I do like to design for the possibility of if he did use one because there have been occasions where you know he'll put his keys with my keys and so thinking through all of those pieces i feel like is super important so for us the list starts with keys okay where do i put my keys because i actually put my keys out here i go all kinds of places all the time i'm taking my kids you know to and from areas and, and doing things like that. I like to have them ready out here where I can just grab them and go. And that includes uh, my purse as well. Now purses that I'm not currently using, they have a spot in my uh, bedroom closet. I do have maybe one to two purses that I'm kind of interchanging sometimes. And so those need an area as well. So that is another thing. Um, my husband and I, we do actually have quite a lot of winter coats. So, um, you know, for changing outfits or whatever, nicer coats, more, you know, uh, casual coats, even his motorcycle jacket, things like that. We have all of those. So a place to put all of our coats. Some things that we have as well that we need this space for, places to put gloves, maybe a hat or two, you know, baskets, something like that that we could put those items in. Um, another need for this area is, I think, having a mirror or somewhere that I can put my coat on and just adjust before I leave. Um, that's something that we use the space for. 
Um, another thing that I like to think about is the future use of a space sometimes too. I feel like all of our homes are forever changing. We're always using areas for different things. We're always needing areas for different things. And so sometimes some of our spaces too aren't very large. And so we need like a multifunctional type of area or space. Right now our basement is currently unfinished. And so until we get that space finished and have a little family area down there, all of our board games also need a space. So now that we've kind of assessed, you know, the need for the area, we have the list of all the things that we use this space for. The next thing I like to do is kind of think through how am I going to accommodate those things, right? So that's where I like to put my money first, honestly. I know that this space is going to take me some time, you know, not everybody has the budget or the time to finish a room from start to finish in a day, a week, a month even. And so for a lot of us, I'm sure, especially if we're renovating while living in our own home or designing spaces while we're living in the space, you know, we don't want a huge mess. We don't want a clutter filled area. I know that we can't function like that. And so where I put my money first is how am I going to accommodate all of those needs for this area? You know, thinking through where am I going to put those keys? Uh, what do we need to hang our coats? I mean, hangers, but you know, all those little pieces, um, the baskets that we might need for those gloves and hats and seasonal items. How am I going to store all of those board games? What do we need for those? You know, all of those little things like that, because we need this space to function and stay clean even through as we design it. So that's where I start first. I make that list. So all of these pieces, even though they need to be functional, they can also be beautiful. So we're kind of tying in a little bit of that first step that I do with the need of the area and how it's going to function with the second step of what I do, which is basically the style, the feel. How do we want the space to look? What is our inspiration? What are we aiming for? And so I do start to kind of go through that a little bit. And my favorite place to go is I'm sure a lot of you as well is Pinterest. Um, a lot of, you know, gorgeous photos are on there to look at and, you know, and think of, okay, I want to put this here. I, I, I feel like, oh, I love that color or I love this style or, you know, whatever it is. Getting all those ideas into one spot. How we start to think of the area in, in our home in general is how do we want to feel? That's one of the biggest things for me. I'm a very, um, I guess you could say emotional person. Uh, I, I go a lot off of my intuition, my gut, uh, how I feel in a room, the vibes that I get, things like that. Even with people, I, I am just that way. And so I also try to think about our family uh, as well. We, having three kids, and if you as well are a family that is always on the go and things like that, your life can tend to be very like stressful. And so for us, we really want a space that is calm, cozy, warm, just relaxed. That's how I go about designing the style and the feel of how I want a space to be. And I feel like by trying to think of those things, that will help determine the direction that you want to go. We need it to be more chill. We also like it to be a little bit more minimal. Um, I really try and design areas now in our home. I used to love like, ooh, bookshelves filled with stuff. I can't even stare at that anymore. Like, I don't know how I did it before. <laughs> I have grown um, as, you know, a person. And so for us, I try really hard to be intentional with where I'm putting things, what I'm doing, how I'm designing it to have that end result that we need. So with all of that in mind, that's where I start. Where, what we need for this room and where am I putting my money first?
So all of our coats and things need to hang up in here. So for instance, like I was telling you before, my husband and I, we actually have a lot of different styles of jackets and things that we need hung up. And for me, I really wanted um, to have a hanger that was kind of proper for those items. Um, before we just had those little plastic ones that you can get in big packs, which are fine. These are plastic too, but I just mean uh, that the shoulder on them was quite thin. And so, you know, you get the little shoulder bumps. So I really wanted to have hangers that had a wider shoulder. So that way they could keep the shape of a lot of our more structural jackets. Um, and things like that and then I had them in a black I got them in a black as well just to tie in with some of our other things and to keep with that neutral color palette the next piece like I was saying before was those baskets and things like that that you may need for um, you know your gloves and, and stuff like that so I then went ahead and I purchased these baskets now um, our shelves that are up here aren't super super wide so if you want to have like baskets fill the entire space I would always say measure first I don't need them to take up the entire space so we just have two um, baskets that sit on this shelf and then the empty side space which is you know not that big that's where I put my purse so Right now, this basket here just has, you know, gloves and hats and things, and you can't see into it, which is what I prefer because it keeps with that clean aesthetic that I like when I open the door, and it's just clean and organized and everything just looks beautiful. <laughs> so that's why I have these baskets, and these I just purchased from Dollar Tree, actually, um, just a plain black color, so they're nothing too expensive or anything like that. Because of all of our board games are currently up here as well, I did go ahead and use the other basket for now for a lot of our like looser game pieces. As you can see, we've got like some of our smaller card games, um, you know, the, some of the kids card games, my husband's poker chips, you know, just little things like that. Um, some of our notebooks and our dice trays and stuff are all kept in this basket. So also right now, since we're using this closet to store a lot of our board games, uh, there is a second shelf up here and that's kind of where I just kind of put all of those right now. So for the future, I will probably be getting more of these baskets. Um, I'm already planning on doing that. So I will be putting those up there as well. Uh, so we just have more baskets, places to put stuff. Always great. All right, so now we're kind of in that little alcove hallway next to the front door. Now, one of the other things that I feel like is super important that you start to do first is kind of measure your space. Know your limitations on how big your items can actually be for that space. So for me, I knew that I would need some sort of entry table. I already knew because of past uses of a different table um, that that table was too big. I didn't like the size. I wanted something smaller. Um, I also know because of where I like to place my keys, I need a table or something to set it on. Um, knowing all of those things, I went into, okay, how big of a table can I actually use? And in comes this table. <laughs> so what I did was I kind of already thought I wanted some sort of round table. Um, I just felt like that was going to be the best. It's not so squared and straight lined that, um, you know, you felt like you were going to bump into it, I guess, you know, so when I started to think about the actual shape of the table, I wanted something that you could walk around. The flow felt nice. And so that's how I knew I wanted it to be round. I took a tape measure and I put it on the wall and then I spread it out into the hallway. And I knew that, okay, I could not have a table bigger than about 20 inches. It needed to be on the smaller side so that we could still have plenty of space to walk through this hallway. Um, it's also right by the front door, which I felt like would be a cute little table to have right over here. It's underneath this little window here as well. And so 
I went ahead and I DIY'd this little table. Now that video is also available for you to watch already if you'd like to. So, you know, I knew that that would be one of the things that I would need for this space um, to put my keys on, right? And so for now, I could, if I didn't know, or if you don't know exactly what you need for this space, you could just put this in the closet right next to my purses or whatever, or, you know, just put it away for right now until you have what you want to put it on. Now, again, like I said, I already kind of knew what I sort of wanted for the area. And um, that's where that table came in. And so those were the pieces that I knew that I needed to make the space function in the interim while we design it. Okay, so now the next thing that I like to do is, like I mentioned before, kind of gather inspiration, right? Um, based on what you're wanting the space to look and feel like. I say dream big for this particular task. Don't feel limited based on your budget or thinking you can't obtain that. Um, I always think that if there's something that you would like, a particular look or item, you can always save up for it, right? You can always DIY something or or whatever um, in order to, to get that look that you're wanting. <laughs> She's playing right here, by the way, just so you know. Um, so basically, I think that the bigger you dream, the better. The more that you can feel like you can have that space be the one of your dreams. It doesn't have to be done overnight. Um, and you can take your time with it. It's really okay. So what I like to do is I just, you know, come to my computer and I really just start to look through my inspiration. What is it about certain things that I like? Um, and I start to pull those images into just a database, right? And for me, that's Pinterest. I love Pinterest. I've been using it for years. I have way too many boards on my Pinterest. You can definitely go and follow me if you'd like. So it literally has everything on there that I have been pinning since I first got an account. Now I already have some uh, inspiration. So I'll go ahead and search for my I call it our home. That's our, our board <laughs> that I have. Some of the um, things in there are still on there from way back when, but my design taste has changed quite a bit since I first got a Pinterest account. But basically that's where I start. And I do, now that Pinterest kind of has this thing, I think they've had this feature for a little while, I'm not sure, but where you can create boards within a board um, to sort of keep your ideas together. I kind of started to do that. Um, now, sometimes I'll forget and I'll like, pin something somewhere else, but that's where I start to pull a lot of ideas from. So I've got, you know, spaces that have the contrasting um, wall color and trim. I have the uh, parts that have like the beams, for instance, that I've thought about actually putting into the entryway for that wooden element. Um, you know, the artwork, the color palette, um, possibly wall treatment. So for a while I thought I might do something like this with a, with a board and batten type of style um, that was more on the, you know, the minimal, um, more a little bit modern uh, look to it. So all of these things, I'll pull all these ideas all into this area, um, you know, and I'll start to kind of collect different pieces that really speak to me, whatever those are. Um, so <laughs> as you can see, lots of pottery. I do like pottery and those organic materials. Um, so yeah, I, I love like this whole look right here. Just, I mean, even the windowsill itself is stunning to me. Um, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to start getting those together. So something that I really liked about some of these images, the color palette, of course, but also um, some of the pieces within them. That's what kind of I start to look at as well. Like this gorgeous 
piece of wood, essentially, <laughs> pedestal that's holding up a vessel that's so simple and beautiful. So I pinned that one. Um, I've got uh, this piece from, it's an Etsy shop actually that has this piece, but it's so gorgeous and I like how low profile it is and it's not, it doesn't feel like it would obstruct the area. Um, so I do have this pinned as well. Um, I also have more benches and beams like this uh, just so I can get ideas for DIYs. Um, if you're like me, you don't necessarily have a large budget to purchase something that's over a thousand dollars. So finding ways that you can potentially DIY these items um, is really great as well. Just everything that I can think of goes into this spot. <laughs> This is also another um, pin that I really liked for the entryway because of its bench and I like the simplicity uh, a lot between the vessels and the bench itself and even just a few books and like a couple bowls. Like I love that. That is so pretty to me. Even looking up keywords in particular like um, let's go to the home feed for instance here and because Pinterest knows me so well now, uh, it tends to just put things on here that I that I already gravitate towards. But one of the terms that I've been searching for a lot and one of the styles that I gravitate towards is uh, wabi-sabi or, you know, Japandi uh, style. And so I'll look through those styles as well and just start to... Oh, like that is so beautiful right there. Um, but I'll just start to look through those and see what it is that I like about them, you know, and why I gravitate more towards that style and then start to really think through the pieces that I'll put into my space. Like how much wood I see, automatically I think, okay, those beams, that could be a good thing um, to, to look for. Uh, you know, to DIY potentially. So all these types of things I do look for when I'm searching through Pinterest for inspiration. And so this is generally the area, like I said, that I will just go big. I will pin anything and everything that I love, the between the colors, between the materials, between the textures, anything that I see that I like, that I would want in a space in my home, I pin that. And so, yeah. That's basically what I do for this next step of the process uh, while trying to think through the style of the space and the feel that I want for it. Okay, so now we're going to start getting into basically the DIY portion of this video. First uh, thing is our printer's broken. And so right now what I've been doing is I like to pull all of the images that I kind of and leaning more towards with all of the pictures that I've collected what do I really like what do I really want what inspires me the most and so I put all of those into um, a Google document and that way I can go to my library and print it so we're, we're gonna go ahead and go back in time a little bit um, to the library and go ahead and get some of this stuff printed off okay, so I got a bunch of the stuff off of like my Pinterest boards for the mood boards and stuff. Um, I just basically made a document that had a bunch of the pictures on it and smaller size so that way I can easily cut them out. But since our printer is not working, I'm gonna go ahead to the library and get these printed off. I've got a bunch of the pictures that I wanted to add to the mood board. And uh, yeah, so then we'll just get that all situated and then come home and I can kind of work on cutting them out and stuff. Yay, are you ready to get ready? Okay, okay, she's ready. Feet up on the dash and the calling open road. Road trip classics on the radio. With your hand tied in mine, there's no such thing as time. Now we can go anywhere you want to go. Ooh, there's no place 
pictures cut out. Now I'm just gonna put these away so my toddler can't find them. All right so now that we've you know gone to the library and printed everything <laughs> that I wanted um, I've actually done a couple of trips so I've gathered all of my um, pictures Oops. Sorry. that I wanted to have uh, just on hand that really inspired me. Let's go ahead and jump to the actual DIY. So I just kind of brought you to our dining room table. This is basically just the plane that you can buy at a bunch of different places, pin board. So I basically am just wanting to kind of cover it. This is gonna be a really simple DIY uh, to, to kind of get that look that I desire. So I'm using just things we that we already have. So basically, you can achieve this look as well. It's pretty, it, it will be pretty simple um, just by getting these items or things like it or, you know, adapting it for whatever you'd like as well. Have the canvas like drop cloth. Um, now, luckily for us, we didn't actually get much paint on these at all. So all I have to do is just find a good spot. Um, I probably will steam this first. So let's go ahead and do that and cut the size we need for it and then we'll just simply staple it right onto the back part of the plane. Feet up on the dash and the calling open road Road trip classics on the radio No such thing as time. Now we can go anywhere you wanna go. Ooh, there's no place we can go. Ooh, my home is when I'm alone with you. to pull pretty tight you know taut or whatever um, <laughs> and put plenty of staples also with this pin board it also had already an area to kind of hang the pin board up so I just cut the fabric a little bit so I can make sure that I can slide the things in there as well I will be hanging it vertically I feel like this is going to be the best spot for it to go <laughs> Maybe even a little off to the side or something like that. Okay. Hopefully that looks all right. It might need to go a little higher, but I'm just going to leave it there for now. It's just on some like little thumbtacks. So that way I can move it around if I feel like this spot does not work out. Okay, I wanted to show you guys also these adorable push pins that I got. They are like, they have this velvet texture. So they actually had these at Dollar Tree and I love them. So I got like 
I don't even know how many boxes, but I got plenty. So we can use these to for our little pins. For the little fabric pieces that we can hang, just some simple little binder clips so that way I can clip the actual fabric on there and, and be able to hang it without having to push through the fabric potentially. I'm not sure if I like these. I've seen that some that actually have like push pins already built into them um, that I might end up purchasing later, but I just figured getting something like this. I also have the other little concrete container that matches the one that I currently have my keys in that I'm gonna keep on my desk and put um, the little pins into, which I think are gonna be so cute. I did print um, as well little labels in like one of my favorite fonts <laughs> so that we can have those ready to go. So since I'm actually currently working on the entryway, I think I'm going to have it a little lower towards the bottom of the mood board just so that way I can add and take away easier. I think first we should add the entryway name to it. Oh my gosh. I don't know if y'all can see this, but the actual pin on here is to die for. And I sort of started to separate a little bit of my inspiration pictures that I have for the entryway, um, including the paint sample, so we can get that up onto the board. This is actually a picture of my rug um, that we currently have in there. So adding that to the board as well. All right, so I'm just gonna keep pinning um, a lot of pieces on here. We can go anywhere you wanna go. Ooh, there's no place we can go. Ooh, our home is when I'm alone with you. really loving the fact that I did this um, if like I said if you are like me and you just really like to have something a little bit more physical um, then I really do feel like this is a great idea for while you're designing your spaces I feel like having something like this as well will really help you to make a more cohesive home even or cohesive space that way you can really visualize and see exactly like how all the rooms would go together as you move throughout your house. Um, they don't have to match, but they can, you know, be related <laughs> in some way. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and kind of peeking into my design process a little bit and what that looks like um, for me and you know, hopefully that'll help you a little bit in designing your own spaces as well. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you really like this kind of content. And, you know, um, if you like that more minimalistic, Japandi, wabi-sabi, sort of like organic, modern feel, <laughs> um, neutral home that, that we're, um, you know, reaching for. And uh, hit that bell notification so that way you can be notified for whenever I post another video as we continue through this journey. Um, our next video will be kind of working on that other hallway uh, here soon. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, and, you know, we're going to be skin coating those walls too. And so I'm going to really try to be thinking through, you know, the mistakes that I made when I did the, the part of the entryway and, and what things that I actually really embraced and the mistakes that I made as well that, that ended up being something that we ended up liking. Uh, so if you're interested in watching that, then you know let me know, comment below. If you have any questions at all, I'd be happy to answer. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye.